What's up guys and welcome to the channel. So last week I received the G-Wolves HDS and I was positively surprised. I was going to play with it for about two weeks before I got used to it and then review the mouse, but I got used to it very fast. So I decided to bump up the review and do it now. If you happen to be new here and you enjoy gaming gear reviews, hit that sub button so you can see my future content. But enough chit chat, let's go check out the G-Wolves HDS. I have the Stardust Special Edition and it does come in one of the best looking boxes I've ever seen. It has this Starry Night kind of theme and I'm a fan. But what's even more impressive is the contents. So looking at them one by one. The box actually contains a metal box that contains all the other stuff. There is obviously the mouse itself. And it does look a lot like an ultralight phantom to me. Then there are the grip tapes that I have already added to the mouse. Then there are two flexible micro USB cables. Additional mouse gates. Additional mouse switches. And most importantly, there is the much needed brush. So the G-Wolves RDS is a small, lightweight, ambidextrous gaming mouse. It is made with the honeycomb design and it has holes on the sides and on top part of the mouse. This is one of the lowest weight gaming mice I've seen. It only weighs 48 grams. The mouse is designed for right-handed users. There are no side buttons on the right side of the mouse. There is a DPI button on top of the mouse and the default steps are 400, 800, 1600 and 3200. And on the bottom part of the mouse there is a pulling rate button. The button has an indicator led for which one you're using. The RGB on this mouse is one of the worst I've seen. There is basically just a pulling rate indicator and then there is a Gvolts logo and that indicates which DPI step you're currently using. Looking at the build quality of the mouse, there is pretty much no top flex on the mouse at all. There is also absolutely no side flex even when I'm using quite a bit of force. There is some bottom flex on the mouse, but I don't think there is a real scenario where you're pushing the mouse from the bottom side when you're gaming. The main mouse buttons have pretty minimal side play or bottom wobble. There is minimal vertical movement, so the buttons don't feel like they are moving when you're holding the mouse in your hand. The scroll wheel does move if you're pushing it from side to side, and it does seem to cause some rattle. But do any of these quality issues actually affect me when I'm gaming? The answer is no. In fact, the mouse felt pretty much rock solid when I was playing CSGO and Diabotical. Issues like bottom flex just don't matter when you're gaming. And the only reason I test those is because I want to show you how well built the product is. But I do not think that issues like side flex or bottom flex can ruin a product. I think the scroll wheel rattle also got worse when I pushed it from side to side, so that's my bad. Here is a quick before and after. The shape of the G-Wolves HDS kind of reminds me of the Final Mass Ultralight 2 and the Cooler Master MM711 or 710. It does feel bigger in hand than the Ultralight 2, but it does not feel as big as the MM711. This can be pretty much also seen from the measurements. The HDS ends up being 113mm long. It's also surprisingly high profile, as it's 40mm high from the highest point. The height here means that even if it's quite small, it's still good to claw grip this mouse. And lastly, it is 61mm wide, and that's pretty wide for a small mouse. My hands are 19cm long and 10cm wide. I would definitely say that with my hand size, it's very easy to claw grip this mouse. Clawing this mouse just feels comfortable and there is enough room for all my fingers. There is only a small bit of my palm touching the mouse, and that makes me lack a little bit of control. Usually I very much dislike fingertip grip because of the lack of control, but with this mouse it does feel good. It's the width of the mouse that makes even fingertip grip work for me. There is a small bit of my palm touching the mouse when I fingertip grip it, and that provides me some more control. There are some comfort curves on the buttons of the HDS, but I think they should be a little bit more deep. By design, the buttons are separated from the shell, and that makes it usually easier to actuate them. You can't feel any wobble on the left mouse button when you're properly holding the mouse, and the same goes for the right mouse button. The left click feels nice and crispy, but it does have some post trouble. The right click then again feels quite mushy. It feels less tactile than the left mouse button and it's pretty hard to spam click the button because of the mushiness. It also has some post travel. The side buttons are solid. There is no pre travel no post travel and they feel very tactile. These side buttons would be very good to use in, for example, Fortnite. I don't use side buttons that much in game, but in general use these feel awesome. The scroll wheel is very good. It's tactile and it's soft. Steps are very defined and it's easy to press down. But here is a full sound test for you guys.
The sensor in the special edition HDS is the 3389 from Pixar. To my knowledge, the Stardust version is the only one with this sensor. And for example, the red and black version will have the 3360. In theory, the 3389 is the better sensor. But in practice, you really don't notice any difference. As expected, I have no complaints with sensor performance in this mouse. It's very responsive and it has no acceleration. Tracking feels good and flick shots feel crispy. So Gbulls provides two micro USB cables with this mouse. You get a black one and then you get a blue one. Both cables are quite thin and they have a nice weave. So they do look exactly the same but I feel like the blue one is a little bit better. It feels more flexible and it does not hold its shape as much as the black one does. I definitely recommend the blue one if you're using the mouse without a bungee. With a bungee there is not much difference. And to be fair the difference is quite minimal between these cables and you will be happy with either one of these. Moving on to the mouse feet. There are two small mouse feet on the front of the mouse and one large at the back side of the mouse. They do provide a very consistent and good glide on my Artisan FX0. The glide is also quite alright on my Logitech G640 and also very good on my Zawi GSRSE. But if I am nitpicking, I would want a little bit smoother experience. But at the moment there are no core pads available, and core pad is usually the one that gets these mouse gates out for the new models first. The HDS has drivers available, but keep in mind that there are two different versions. So there are different drivers for the standard and special editions. You can download the HDS drivers from the beautiful GVOLS website. There in the software section you can find the HDS Ace and the HDS Classic versions. If you happen to have the Stardust edition, you download the HDS Ace, and if you have to have the standard edition, you download the HDS Classic. Drivers don't look good, but they are pretty easy to use. In the main view, you can do some button assignments, and at the bottom, you can reconfigure the RGB. In the basis tab, you can add or remove DPI steps and configure the DPI in increments of 50. In the advanced tab, you can change polling rate and lift of distance. I'm not exactly sure what this scan line option is, but I do think that it is angle snapping. I recommend leaving it off. Then you can set the debounce time. The default is 16 ms, I've set it down to 10 ms. And you can even set up macros in this driver. I will have to say that it looks like this mouse has some widespread quality issues. For example, Vessel Gaming delayed their Amazon launch because they found something when they tested the batch. Now that's pretty bad, I've never seen anything like that before. But time to conclude the review. I really hope that Gable sorts these quality issues out because the mouse is absolutely great. For me, this is a very good claw and fingertip grip mouse. I can pretty much recommend this to anybody who likes claw grip or fingertip grip. Although if your hands are very large, you might enjoy the MM711 more. I really enjoy playing with this mouse. The mouse felt comfortable from the start and I performed very well in game. This might just fit into my top 3 best gaming mice, but I'm not totally sure yet. I need to play with it a little bit more. That's it for the review guys. Remember to hit that like button, hit that sub button and see you in the next one.